Hello and welcome to lecture number five, Dynamics 2. Uh, this is a continuation of the previous lecture where we will be doing uh, more problems. Uh, we will be covering chapters six and seven. I believe last lecture we covered five and six. Now we're going to continue with six and then seven as well. Um, uh, I will begin with the friction force. I am assuming that you already know what the friction force is, but I will talk a little bit about it. So a friction force is a force that tends to oppose the motion. For example, let's say I have a box and the box, let's say, is resting on the surface. Something like that. Uh, let me draw it again. And suppose that I kick the box, okay? So let's say I kick it from this direction right here, from the left side. And so now I kick it and then it starts moving. So here's the box again. The box was here initially before I kicked it. And now it is moving along, uh, you know, the floor until it stops somewhere here, let's say. Okay. Uh, so the question is what caused it to stop? Well, what caused it to stop is the friction. So as the box is moving, so let's say here is the box in, at some point in its uh, journey. Let me just erase that. So when we ask the question, uh, what are the forces on the box? The forces are basically, well, we have the weight of the box, mg. And as we talked about it last time, uh, for every action, there is a reaction. So whenever there is a weight, there is also a normal force. The weight, of course, is pressing on a surface. So the normal force N is going to be like that. Okay. And other forces are there. Well, since the box is moving in this direction, here is the direction of motion, the velocity. And you may imagine it's also decelerating. So it's a deceleration minus A. So there is a friction force, and we said that the friction force is a force, go back to this definition here, go to the, to the term, uh, friction force is a force that opposes, oppose, opposes motion. Okay, so what that means, if the object is moving in this direction, this way to the right, the friction force is going to be to the left like that. And we have a symbol for it, and that is a small letter F. Okay, so that's the friction force, F. Uh, eventually, the friction force will take over, and then eventually it will manage to stop the box. And that's why the box will eventually stop. You get that? So now we ask the question, what is an expression for the friction force? The friction force, F, is equal to mu times n. Let me write it better. Mu, mu is a Greek letter, and you pronounce it as m and u, mu, okay? Multiply by n. n here is the normal force right there, okay? So that's basically the definition. Now, mu uh, is referred to as the coefficient of friction. There are two types, one coefficient of kinetic friction, coefficient of static friction, but for now, it's a coefficient of friction. And this mu value is always between, exists between two values, between zero and one, okay? All the time, most of the time, okay? What that means is that, uh, for example, a mu value would be something like 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.98, uh, uh, and so on, 0.78, and so on, you see what I'm saying? So it's always, a, uh, you know, somewhere between uh, 0 and 1. Now, when we say 0, and the, the 0 and the 1 are basically extreme points, the 0 here is, uh, if you have a friction, a surface with a 0 mu, it means it is 100% smooth surface, okay? So 100% smooth, extremely smooth, okay? And um, uh, 1 here, if you have a mu equal 1, it means it's 100% rough, Okay, both of those surfaces are, are unrealistic. 
most of the surfaces out there in the real world is somewhere between zero and one. You see what I'm saying? Um, uh, let me let me show you some uh, let me show you some sample values of friction from the book. Hey, they are. Um, this is uh, chapter six, and the section is called uh, uh, friction. As you can see here, here they are. So, for example, uh, you have a you know different. Uh, can I magnify it? Oh, you can. Okay, good. Uh, material. For example, you have a rubber on dry concrete. What is that? Imagine a bicycle. You're riding a bike on a concrete. You know, the sidewalk. Uh, you sort of thing. So the the coefficient of mu k and mu s. Uh, the mu k means kinetic friction, which means the friction coefficient while the object is moving, in other words, rubbing, okay? And static means the, uh, the coefficient of friction while the object is at rest, it's not moving. So, and, uh, and the static friction is always greater than the kinetic friction, okay? In other words, as the object moves faster and faster, the friction gets less and less. That's why uh, on an icy road you shouldn't drive fast because the coefficient of kinetic friction actually gets smaller and smaller. It becomes more slick, if you will, or more slippery. You get that? Anyway, so rubber on a dry concrete, co coefficient of friction is almost 1. I don't think it's exactly 1. When it's moving, 0.8. Uh, rubber on a wet concrete, uh, the static is 0.3, kinetic 0.25. Steel on steel, you can think of that like the piston inside your car, uh, inside your car engine. You know, you have the cylinders uh, going up and down. So it's static 0.8, kinetic 0.6. Steel on steel, lubricated, you know, when you add motor oil, and that's why you need to always change your, uh, change your oil every once in a while, because look at that, it becomes really uh, much less, 0 0.05 compared to 0 0.6, if you have a steel on steel, see that? Wood on wood, uh, 0.5 and 0.2. Wood on snow, 0.12 and uh, 0.06, and then ice on ice and so on. Okay. So anyway, those are just uh, you know basic things. Uh, they'll just give you a feel for how they are, how this the coefficient of friction is, um, uh, you know, uh, for different surfaces. Okay, good. Uh, let's go back. So. Let me just give you a simple problem and show you how all of that applies. Keep in mind, the most important thing is, is that the friction force has an expression, or I can, there is a way that I could calculate the friction force, and that's equal to mu n. Mu is the coefficient of friction usually is given to you in the problem, and or you can look it up. You know, you it will describe something, and you need to look it up. And then n here is the uh, normal force. So l let me give you an example. So let's say, for example. <clears throat> Uh, again, let's just go back to the same box problem. So I have a, this is the floor, here's the box. Suppose that the box has a mass of, uh, pick a number, one kilogram, okay? And I would kick the box uh, with an initial velocity of, let's say, I, so I kick the box, uh, giving it initial velocity V naught, uh, let's pick a number. Let's say, um, uh, 10 meters, oh, that's too high. Let's say 5 meters per second, okay? Let's say that it's still high, but anyway, let's say 5 meters per second. And eventually the box stops somewhere here, okay? And I want to know, uh, well, let's say that the box stops after, uh, say, um, uh, 2 meters, okay? I'm, I'm making up this problem. I don't have it in front of me or anything. Uh, so the box stops after two meters. Uh, I and, and uh, given that, uh, let's say that the floor is a concrete floor, and the mu value for the concrete—I forgot it already. The mu value for the concrete is uh, roughly, let's say, point uh, point eight. The box is not rubber, but let's just say that. Okay. Now the question is. Um, what is the rate of acceleration? Okay, there we go. What's the rate of acceleration? Okay. So how do we do so solve this problem? Well, 
here's how you do it. While the box, once I kick the box, so now the box is moving with an initial speed of 5, and of course it will start decelerating, slowing down, slowing down until it stops here. So the velocity here is 0. The velocity here, right at the moment I kick the box, is 5 meters per second. And I am given the distance. I can calculate the acceleration. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Let, let, me, let me also ask, what is the friction force? Actually, that's the whole purpose of this problem is to find the cushion force. Anyway, all right, so we're going to find the acceleration of the friction force. So anyway, so I have that. Um, I have the distance traveled until the box stopped. So I have initial velocity, final velocity, and distance. Um, I can find the acceleration by using kinematics. Go back to the kinematic equations, middle, the second one. Remember the second one? Here it is. I hope you memorize all of them by now. V squared equals V naught squared plus 2AX, X being the distance traveled by the box, which is right here. Uh, the, the, the final velocity of the box is zero right there. And so therefore the acceleration is equal to V naught squared with a minus here over 2X. So that will be equal to minus five squared <clears throat> over two times two. So that'll be 25 divided by 4. I hope you're working with me. Here's my calculator. So I have 25 divided by 4. Answer 6.25, negative 6.25 meters per second squared. Okay. There we go. I have the rate of acceleration. In other words, the box is decelerating at a rate of 6.25 meters per second each second. That's the meaning of that. Got it? Okay, now the next step, the, or the next part, he said find the friction force. Well, what's the friction force is equal to? Mu n. All right, so what is n here? Well, before I do that, let me go back and draw the free body diagram of the box. Okay, here it is. Here is the box. It doesn't matter whether it's moving or not. I just want to draw and put in all the forces on the box. Well, the forces on the box are basically the weight of the box, mg, and I have the normal of the box. Remember, the normal is what? The reaction to the weight, okay? And it exists only if there is a surface. If there is no surface, there is no normal. Keep that in mind. And then I have the friction force going this way. It's always opposite of the motion. The motion is this way. Got it so far? All right. So now I can go uh, the sum of the forces. Where should I put it here? Some of the forces in the y direction. Is the box moving in the y direction? And the answer is no. It's not moving up and down, so that's zero. So what do we have here in the y direction? We have n minus mg equals zero, so therefore n equals mg. Okay, I already knew that really before I do it. I hope you know that already, right? So anyway, here's a proof for it. So the normal force uh, is equal to the weight. Got it? Now, Along the x-axis, some of the forces in the x-axis, that's equal to ma, because the x-axis is this way. Here's the x-axis, and here is the y-axis. So on the x-axis, we have only one force, which is the friction force right here, and it's in the negative. <clears throat> so I have minus F equals ma, but F is equal to what? F is equal to mu n. Let me plug it in. So I have here minus mu n equals ma. And, but n is equal to what? n is equal to mg right there. Right, guys? So I have here minus mu mg equals ma. And the masses cancel out. And um, what do I do? To, um, oh. I'm solving for the friction force. I forgot myself. Anyway, this is, uh, you, know, you can continue on with that if you want to solve for something uh, like mu, but mu is given to us. I don't need that. I'm sorry. Uh, all I need is, um, uh, I think I'm ahead of myself. Let me just go back. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that uh, we don't need this information. So he just wants the friction force, and the friction force is right here. Is that right? So I can do that. Uh, let me delete that. Sorry about this. So here we have the friction force is minus ma, 
and that's equal to minus m m is equal to what m is equal to uh, one kilogram right here right right there uh, so we have here minus one times the acceleration acceleration is given to us is equal to we just got it actually it's not given to us we got it right here negative 6.5 And that will give me 6.25 Newton. This is the friction force. Now, let me let me do something here. I think I gave you too much information on this problem. Like I said, I just made it up. Suppose that the mu is not given to us, okay? So this mu is not given to us. And they are at, we are asked to find mu. So let's say this is the third question. The third question here is find mu. Okay? So I want to continue with what I have done. I just erased... So if we go back, so we have here, I'm going to go back to this one. So I have here minus F equals MA. I already know what F is. Um, and then F is minus mu N equals MA. And this is mu minus mu MG equals MA. The masses cancel out. And so mu is equal to a over, uh, I'm sorry, minus G, that is. And that's it. So I have here, uh, A is equal to what? I just got it. What is it? Right here, right? So I can just work it out. So I have here negative 6.25 divided by negative 9.8. And there we go. It is less than 1. So we have that divided by 9.8 equals to 0.6. Four. All right, so that's 0.64. And there we go. That's the mu value. Got it? Okay. Good. Okay, let me go back to the uh, inclined plane problem, the one I did last time. And uh, this time I'm going to do the same problem, except that I'm going to um, add friction to it. Okay? We're going to be doing a bunch of problems that include friction. Because this is extremely important. Inclined plane. With friction. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, uh, which one is this one? Yeah, so uh, remember the truck that we are towing or the car that we're towing up a ramp? That's the problem that I'm talking about. We completely ignored the friction, but we're going to include it there. So here it is. Um, so here's the ramp, something like that. I have a steady hand this time. And here is the, bar, the, 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 the truck. Okay, and it's being towed and with a cable right here and a tension T. And the inclination angle here is 30 degrees. All right, so here is the data. The mass of the truck is 1,500 kilogram. That's a pretty light truck, actually. Uh, the tension that is being used is 2,500 <coughs> uh, Newton, excuse me. Uh, and then we have a friction on it. You know, the truck, uh, as it is moving up the ramp, there is a friction. Uh, so that's 200 Newton. Uh, theta is 30 degrees. I just said that. And then the initial velocity is, we, I mean, the truck started from rest. And the question is, what is the velocity... What is V after five seconds? Okay. Now that's the first question. Second question, find the, the, what is the coefficient of friction? Okay. So let me tell you the story. So the story is, truck was at the bottom of the ramp. There is a cable, and it's being towed by, you know, some crank or some um, other truck, whatever it is. 
but it, it has a tension and this force this tension is equal to 2500 the weight of the truck or the mass of the truck rather 1500 small little Toyota truck um, and it started from a velocity zero at rest and it's going up the ramp but it is accelerating because he said what's the velocity after five seconds that means it's speeding up right also uh, if the friction on the truck is 200 newton not much what is the coefficient of friction in this case all right so that's what the problem is very good problem i hope you'll understand it and i'll try to explain it as much as i can um so let's work out the free body diagram in other words put all the forces on it so i'm going to redraw it again here is my inclined plane inclined plane that is okay and here is the truck i'm actually happy with my steady hand today there we go and so what are the forces well let's put a dot there for the center of the truck the center of mass of the truck so that you have here the weight of the truck mg okay and then you have the normal what's the direction of the normal as we said before it's always perpendicular to the surface here is the surface always 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 the normal is perpendicular to the surface so uh you're not going to go like that that's not perpendicular to the surface this way got it that's the key the normal is perpendicular to the surface like that here is the normal and of course this angle right here whoop, is the same as this angle here uh, you can memorize oops ah okay good it's the same as this one all right and what else do we have well oh yeah we have the 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 tension t and then we have the friction it's always opposite the motion the friction is like here okay and that's about it these are the four forces but we have a problem i hope you remember what the problem is so we're going to put our datum along the ramp so the ramp is this way the x-axis is this way always okay always and i was not uh, i mean you can do it you can put the you can put your datum here if you want to like this but i think it becomes more difficult okay you can do it if you want to. it's correct there's nothing wrong with it but it's just more difficult um so the, what's good about putting it like that is that you will see that all the forces are along the x and y except for one see the tension is along the x the normal is along the y and the friction is along the x the only thing that we need to resolve is the mg the mg is kind of going like that you see what i'm saying so we need to resolve that other than that we're good to go so i need to resolve the mg and i think we did that in the past you can go back and see how we did it so what will happen here i'm going to have two components for the mg one this way and that would be mg cosine you can memorize it if you want to and then the one down this way i don't want to touch the friction right there mg sine theta and there we go these are all the forces i can now ignore this mg because it's being replaced with those two components you get that okay and now and remember the whole system is in motion you know some velocity some acceleration got it okay okay so let's start with the equation of motion we begin with some of the forces in the y direction zero why zero because the truck is not moving up and down remember up and down is this y right this way it's not moving along the y is it it's just moving along the ramp it's not moving up and so that's zero that's why you put the zero there there is zero kinetic reaction so now you want to collect all the forces along the y there are two of them normal and mg mg cosine theta so we have here normal minus mg cosine theta equals zero and that gives me normal equals mg cosine theta i can actually get a number out of that if i want to but it, i will do the numbers later like i told you before it's a good habit to put the symbolic formulas you put in the numbers later okay this is how professional engineers do it because you want the reader to know what you're doing you see what i'm saying 
They don't want the reader to understand the solution stuff. At the end, once you get all the equations of motion, the EOMs, then you put in your number and get your number. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So we got that. So I'm done with this part. Now I'm going to go with uh, some of the forces in the x direction equals ma, right? Uh, I made it. There we go. And so we have how many forces do we have here? One, the T, F, and MG sign. Got it? So I have here <clears throat> uh, T minus F minus MG sine theta equals what? MA. There we go. Okay. Um, the friction force is given to me. So I don't need to resolve, I mean, to calculate anything. Here it is. And the tension is given to me. The weight is given to me. I mean, really, everything is given to me. If I plug in all the numbers here, I can actually get A. Watch. T is equal to what? T equal to 2,500 right there. And the mass is 1,500 and the friction is 200. So let's put them all in there. So that's going to be 2,500. Oh, let me box it. Always box your equations. That's another advice. Make it nice and clear for the reader. <clears throat> Always think about the reader. So we have here 2,500 minus 200 minus 1,500. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, times G, that is. 9.8 times sine uh, 30 equals 1,500 times A. You see that? Very easy problem. And then you just go, uh, you, you put uh, everything in the calculator, and when you do it, all the number crunching here, you'll end up with A equal to 11.6 meter per second squared. There we go. I got the acceleration. You can pause the video and then calculate yourself and prove that you get the same number. I hope I'm correct, of course, provided. All right, so I got that. Now I come back to this one. Oh, he wants what? He said, what is the velocity after five seconds? I got out of all that the acceleration. Is that important? Sure, it's important. Why? Kinematics. Kinematic equation number one. Remember kinematic equation number one? V equals V naught plus AT. Um, he said after five seconds, so T is five, initial velocity is zero. Five, uh, v is 5, uh, excuse me, uh, what is it? Uh, the acceleration is 11.6, so I can find the velocity. So the velocity here is equal to 0 plus 11.6 times 5 seconds. And that would give me, <clears throat> let me calculate that. So I have 11.6 times 5, and so 58. So the, the uh, really, that high? Hmm, kind of hard to believe. Is that what I got? That's really high for a towed truck to go 58. Uh, but anyway, probably I made up for this problem. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so we have here 58 uh, meters per second. Okay. Um, very good. Now, what's the next one? He said, um, what's the mu value? All right. Uh, so how do I find the mu value? Well... I know that the friction force is equal to mu n, right? And mu, uh, uh, the friction force is 200. The mu value is what I'm looking for. And n is equal to what? It's right here, guys, right? We just found it here. So I'm going to plug in everything. So I have here F equals mu mg cosine theta. So mu is equal to f over mg cosine theta. Like I said, I like to solve the symbolic equation first before I put in my numbers. And now, so therefore, mu is equal to the friction is 200 divided by uh, the mu value, excuse me, m is 1,500 times 9.8 uh, cosine 30. I bet you this is a problem that I made up because the numbers are not realistic. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we have here um, 1,500 times 9.8 times 0.866, and then inverse that times 200, and the friction force is really tiny, um, 
0 0.016. Okay, there we go. Okay, good. I hope this is clear for you. This is a very, very good problem. I hope uh, you will, uh, uh, the best way to do it is, uh, you know, once we are done, once you're done with uh, re uh, looking at this problem, you can stop the video and try to work it out by yourself without looking at the solution. This is how you really learn the, those solution steps. All right, one more. <clears throat> oh, this one is a good one. Number 46 in the book. Let me get show it to you. I think it's uh, chapter 6, number 46. Forty-six is coming. Oh, there's no picture. I have a picture here in my notes, but anyway, oh well. Okay, it says here number forty-six, um, a rifle with a barrel length sixty centimeter fires a ten gram bullet with a horizontal speed of five hundred meter per second. Okay, for your own information, the speed of sound is three hundred and forty. So this is more than Mark One. You see what I'm saying? That's actually the Typical speed of a, of a bullet is faster than the speed of sound. Slightly faster. Okay, so it's 400 meters per second. The bullet strikes the block of the wood and penetrates it to a depth of 12 centimeters. Okay? I'm going to draw a picture to show you what that means. Uh, a, what resistive force? He's basically asking for friction. What resistive force uh, does the wood exert on the bullet? And B, how long does it take the bullet to come to rest? Okay? Cool problem. So let's see how we do it. Uh, chapter 6. Okay, so what you have in here... Here is the bullet, uh, excuse me, the, let, let me draw with the, the rifle first. So here is a typical rifle, how it looks like, something like that. At least a classic looking rifle, like that. And uh, the bullet is, let's assume the bullet is right here. Okay, this is called the barrel. All right, this is the barrel. And the barrel's length is 0.6. 0.6 meters, okay, and uh, and then you know you pull the trigger. Here's the trigger right here, and then the uh, the, the bullet is shot the is shot with large velocity of 400 initial velocity, 400 meter per second. Okay, very fast. Okay, then on the other end, now we need to draw the the block which is right here. I'm going to draw it at the bottom. So what's happening here is here is the block, and the bullet now penetrates the block, and it becomes embedded in there. There it is, and it penetrates it for a distance of 0.12 meters, okay? And the bullet, of course, here is zero. So, right before it enters the block, the bullet is equal to V0, which is equal to 400 right here, guys, right? And V0 equals 400. And it's embedded in there. This is the reason. And then what causes it to stop? The resistive forces, the drag, the wood drag, if you will, or the friction force. You got it? Okay. So, um, He's a, okay, so what else do we have? The mass of the bullet is 10 grams. The initial velocity, and that's about it. Let me, let me go back to the problem one more time. What does he want? I forgot what he wants. Okay, so there's this question. So what's this? What is it? He, okay, he wants the friction force, F. This is what he wants. Also, the time. Got it? Okay. So, how do we do this problem? Well, um, let's look at the bullet before i do anything i just want to imagine the bullet here this bullet when it when it's somewhere in the middle i mean somewhere moving on its way to stop okay so here is the bullet in the wood 
And you ask the question, what are the forces on the bullet? Well, here is the friction force right here. It's trying to stop the bullet. You get that? And of course, you have the mg of the bullet. Um, since there is really no, I mean, there are surfaces here, but the normal becomes very really complicated. It's not important, very important. But mainly the only force on it in the x direction here, the only force on the bullet in the x direction <clears throat> is the friction force. See what I'm saying? Um, so, before I do anything, all right, so, uh, before I do anything, um, from this information that I have here, okay, I have the initial velocity, I have the final velocity, I have the distance traveled by the bullet until it stopped. What can I get out of that? I can get acceleration. Is that right? I can get acceleration. So, if I get the acceleration, and I know that F equals MA, M is the mass of the bullet, and A, I, I can find the, 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 the friction. That's it. I'm done with the problem, basically. You see that? Okay. So let's see. So with this information here about uh, the bullet in the, in the wood right here, so I know that I can use kinematic equation number two, which is this one. V squared equals V naught squared plus 2AX. It's a deceleration here, right? But uh, the minus now will pop up by itself. I don't need to impose it, okay? So, of course, the bullet stops at the end. Initial 400 squared <clears throat> plus 2 acceleration I'm looking for. And the x is 0.12 meters, that is, right? And then I can find the acceleration, which is 400 quantity squared divided by 2 times 0.12. You see what I'm saying? And then we can calculate that. So I have here 400 squared divided by 2 divided by 0.12. It's going to be a huge number. So the deceleration rate is extremely large. Oops, I forgot the minus sign right there. Sorry. Uh, so that's going to be uh, 6.7 with a minus times 10 to the power of 5 meter per second squared. As you can see here, this is a huge deceleration. Okay? Huge deceleration. No wonder the bullet heats up a lot. Okay? It stops immediately. I mean, it stopped within, I mean, going Mach 1 or more than the speed of sound and within only 0.12, you're talking here within, um, that's about uh, five, six inches, within six inches it stopped. Remember, something going this, at the speed of sound and it stops within six inches, okay? This is, this is about six inches here. You can imagine the deceleration rate. There it is. It's a huge deceleration, all right? Okay, good. Um, so now, what is the friction force? Well, since we said the only force on the bullet in the x direction is F, the friction force, so the F here, or I can put it minus if you want to, is equal to MA. So here, F is equal to minus MA. So that will be minus the mass of the bullet is 10 grams. So that's 10 times 10 to the negative 3 kilogram. You want to convert it to kilogram, right? Time the acceleration, this whopping uh, uh, 6.5 times 10 to the fifth, 6.7 times 10 to the fifth. And then we can calculate that. <clears throat> and we get um, I get. Uh, 6,670 Newton. So this is the, the friction force, the resistive effect. Got it? There it is. Now, the last part of the problem, it says, uh, how long does it take the bullet to come to rest? In other words, how long the bullet will stop within six inches, okay? You can imagine it's an extremely short time 
maybe in the range of uh, microsecond or something like that. Very, very small time. So let's see. So how do we do it? Well, um, kinematics again. Which kinematics? Since he's asking for time, I'm going to go with the first kinematic equation. V equals V naught plus AT. Zero equals 400 plus the acceleration here, the negative, right there. So that's going to be um, minus 6.7 times 10 to the fifth T. See what I'm saying? And then you solve for time. And the time becomes, um, maybe I should do the symbolic formula first. Sorry about that. I need to listen to my own advice. There we go. And then we plug it in over there. And when we work it out, guys, you're going to get uh, 0 minus 400 over negative 6.7 times 10 to the fifth. And the time is, um, I'm copying it from my notes here, 600 microsecond, okay? 600 millionth of a second, if you will, is that a thing? So there we go. That would be, uh, I mean, in a less than a heartbeat, if you will. There we go. Okay. All right. That's a good problem. One more. Okay, this is one from my notes. Um, it's called a sliding hockey puck. Sliding hockey. Is that how you spell hockey? I think so. Puck. So we have a, a puck, hockey puck. It looks something like that. It's flat and kind of long. Something like this. Okay. Um, the initial, okay, it's being hit. So the initial, well, I think we did a problem like that. Oh, well, let's just do it again. So uh, it's being hit with initial velocity of 20 meters per second um, on a frozen pond. So we have a, so V naught equal to 20 meters per second uh, frozen pond uh, slides uh, for 120 meters uh, comes to rest uh, so that means V equals zero. Uh, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction? There we go. I think we did a problem like that. The first one, I think. Uh, so anyway, how do we do it? Simple. So here is the puck right here. We're going to put all the uh, all the forces on it. So we have the normal force. You have the mg, the weight. And then you have, of course, the friction force like that. And, of course, it's moving in this direction, this way. If it's moving in this direction, that means the friction is this way. If it's moving in this direction, the friction, we're going to put it this way. You see what I'm saying? It's always opposing the motion. <clears throat> That's how you know which direction the friction is. All right. So, um, sum of the force in the x direction equals ma. So, I have here uh, minus f equals minus mu n equals ma. I hope this is clear. Um... And then in the y direction, we just have n equals mg. I hope you believe that. Right? So this gives us, we've done that already. And so all I need to do is you plug it in. Um, let me do, okay, since I know, since I know the distance and I know the final velocity, initial velocity, I can find the acceleration. I can plug it in here and they can do the rest of the problem. I hope this is easy. So here we have V squared equals V naught squared plus 2AX. So in this case, I would have 0 equals 20 squared plus 2A times 120, right? 120 meters. 
and therefore a is gives us to be negative 1.67 meter per second squared okay that's the acceleration and then with that in mind so i come back to my eom the equation of motion so that gives me minus f which is minus mu sub k mg right n is mg so that i'm going to plug in here and i forgot to put the sub k here and that's equal to ma masses cancel out so now mu sub k is equal to a over g with a minus here and of course we already have the minus here this minus belongs to the you know the this minus right here anyway you work it out i i hope this is easy and the answer would be 0.17 i wasn't aware we did something exactly like this one anyway there it is okay simple Okay, uh, let's do something harder. Um, it's in the book. Num yeah, number 56. Let me go to 56 in the book. There's a picture to it. This one is cool, actually, and this one. Oh, this is 56. Oh, okay, this is 56. Okay, so... And 58, uh, this one. Um, let me do 56. I'll have you do 58, and I will do it in class. Okay, 56. So look at it. Uh, well, let's read the problem. As you, here's the picture. Okay. So what you have, you have a block. Here's the wall, and you have a force exerted on the on the block at the edge of the block like that. I, I don't remember the the, the 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 statement of the problem, but let's see. Um, he says a two kilogram wood box, okay, slides down, uh huh, down, uh, slide down a vertical wood wall, so they have wood on wood. You know what I mean? So, if mu is not given to you, you have to look it up. So. Uh, a two kilogram wood box slides down a vertical wall, wood wall, while you push on it at 45 degree angle. What magnitude of force would you apply this F right here? This F right here. How much would you apply there to cause the box to slide down at constant speed? Aha. Uh -huh. At constant speed. What does that mean when you say constant speed? What that means, what comes to mind, constant speed, acceleration zero. In other words, sigma f equals zero. It's not equal ma. That's the meaning of constant speed. Okay? Now, why did he say it slides down, not up? Why is that? Why is that important? Well, it's important because you can. he will tell you what, he, uh, this information will tell you the direction of the friction force. Remember, the friction force is opposite the motion. He said it's moving down, so now you have an idea where is the friction force is going. It's up. See what I'm saying? So you can read all that. All right, so how do we do this problem? Let me put it on the side here. I mean, the picture. <clears throat> Number... 56 or 58? I forgot. 56. Okay, so let me draw the 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 pro, the, uh, the the diagram. Always make a drawing and put in all the forces on it. So here's my block, the wooden block. And remember, it's wood on wood. Mu is not given to you. It doesn't mean that uh, you have to f uh, calculate it. You can just look it up in the book. And we already looked it up anyway, wood on wood. So there we go, here have that. And now, here is the force. It doesn't look 45, sorry. My hand is not steady anymore, I guess. There we go. Okay, and what else do we have? Well, we have the mg of the box. It's always pointing downward the weight okay and and the box is moving down this is the motion so the friction force is going to be up this way right 
Okay, and what is the direction? Okay, remember something. Whenever there is a friction, there is a normal associated with it, okay? You cannot do a problem if you don't have the normal. You can't do a problem that contains friction or you're asked to find friction, for example. You must have that normal, okay? And now, what is the normal force? The normal force is a force that's coming out of what? The surface. We already talked about that, okay? So, what is the direction of the normal force? Don't tell me this way because there is no surface at the bottom. But there is a surface here. Look at that. The normal is this way. See that? And maybe you've never seen that before. But again, the, that's why we call it normal. The word normal means what? Means uh, perpendicular. There are three words in mathematics that describe normal. Let's say two lines are normal to each other, perpendicular. Perpendicular, two lines are perpendicular. Two lines are normal or two lines are orthogonal. All of them means 90 degrees. You see what I'm saying? That's the meaning of it. So the word normal means the perpendicular. Perpendicular to what? To the surface. Where is, where is the surface? The surface right here. So there is a surface here. Now, if there are two surfaces, well, you'll have two normals. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So anyway, so we have that. And this is the force. And my datum is going to be like that. Simple. Okay, so the the friction is y along the y, normal is along the x, mg is along the y. The one that is you know uh, different is the force f. So I have to resolve into two components. You see what I'm saying? Let me diff use a different color. So it's going to look something like that. One like this, and one like that. This one, remember, this is 45 degrees, or this one 45, either. So this is going to be F cosine 45 degrees. And this one is F <coughs> uh, cosine or sine, the same thing, because cosine 45 and sine 45 the same. And there we go. Now I can ignore this. I can ignore it if I don't want it, because it's the two forces here are replacing it. And there we go. Now I'm ready to solve this problem. Okay, keep in mind, he says, let me go back to the problem again. He says, what magnitude of the force should you apply to cause the box to slide down at constant speed? You got that? Constant speed. What does that mean? No acceleration. That's really what he's saying. So what that means, sigma F in the Y direction is zero. Sigma F in the X direction is zero. Okay. Both zero. Constant acceleration. So what is the Y? Well, what do we have here in the Y? We got the F and we got the MG. And we got the F sine right there. So we have three of them. F, MG, and sine. Put them all together. So I have here F minus MG plus F big sine 45 equals zero. Okay. Let me box it. I'll come back to it. Now the y, excuse me, the x, the x I have uh, two of them, the normal and this one. See that? So here I have the normal is n, positive, minus f cosine 45, and that's zero. See what I'm saying? Okay. Um, he's asking for... Um, Oh, yeah, the big F, right. Okay, um, so what's the next step? Um, I don't know the force F, but I know that F in general, so I have those two, let me box them again, both of them. Okay, I know that F is mu N, right? And N is right here. See that, N? Uh, let me solve for it here. N from this equation is equal to F cosine 45. Cosine 45 is 0.707. I'll come back to it later. But I already know. I don't know the F. I get that. I don't know the F. But the N is right here. So I can put it in there without any problem. And I can take this whole thing and put it in there. And then I will have one master equation. You know, that's, that's a possibility. That's how you would do it. Okay. But before I do all that, let me find mu. Well, how do I get mu? I get it from the friction. 
So I go back to the book. I know it's going to take me a while to fish it out. I have my hard copy right here. It says right here, um, wood on wood, and it's, since it's moving, so that's kinetic friction, wood on wood is 0.2. So given in the table, in table uh, 6.1, the, the coefficient of friction on wood on wood is 0.2. Wood on wood. Okay, this is given to us. He didn't tell us to look it up, but you want to be smart enough to look it up. All right, so we have that. Uh, okay, great. So all I need now is to take this, plug it in there. Okay, and, uh, and then I have this and I'm plugging it in there. You got that? And then all of that, this I'm going to end up with one big master equation, this one right here. And I can just do the algebra to solve for f. And I'm done with the problem. So here's how we do it. I'm going to start with this equation, star. I'm going to call it star. So I have here star. I have small f, which is mu n right here. And n is that. So that's going to be mu f cosine 45 again i don't like to plug in numbers until later minus mg plus f sine 45 equals zero now i'm ready to plug numbers okay remember i'm solving for solve for f okay so you you have everything in there so that's going to be uh 0.2 f cosine 45 at 0.707 minus the mass of the box. I forgot what it is. Is it given to us? Um, yeah, 2 kilograms right here. So I have here 2 times 9.8 plus f and then 0.707. As you can see, uh, everything is known except that we have only one unknown. So this is a doable problem. Work out the details and you get F to be equal to, according to my notes, 23 Newton. Okay? Okay, great. Okay, um, I'm going to move on to Chapter 7. And there is nothing new in 7. It's just more application of Newton's laws. So I have a bunch of problems to work on 7, mainly a lot of pulleys. I'm going to concentrate on pulleys. So let's move on to Chapter 7. Okay, now we begin with uh, Chapter 7. And as I told you, it is just a continuation of 6. Uh, there is really nothing new except the applications are slightly different. A lot of them are uh, involved uh, pulleys and ropes and stuff like that. But it's basically the same thing. There's nothing new here. Um, I like example 7.6 in the book. Uh, let me look at it and show it to you. <clears throat> right here. Um, it says comparing two tensions. So what you have, look at the picture here. Uh, you have a picture of two blocks A and B connected by a, a cable, number two we call it. And then there is cable one and there is a tension it being pulled this way uh, given that the mass B is greater than mass A, okay? He said blocks A and B in the figure are connected by a massless string, 2, and pulled across a frictionless table, okay? So we're going to ignore friction, uh, by a massless string, 1. B, block B, has a larger mass than A. Is the tension in block 2 larger than, smaller than, or equal to tension in 1, Okay? And as you can see here, we are ignoring the friction force, all right? So how do we do something like that? Well, uh, we basically take the two blocks, break them apart, and put all the forces on block, one, uh, block A and block B and see how they connect with each other, you know what I mean? And keep in mind what the tension is always out of the body. You remember that? We talked about that before. Tension is always out of the body. All right, so let's draw that. So I have here example. So 
really six. And here's the floor. Uh, well, let's throw the boxes. So uh, here is block B. And I have block A, assuming it is slightly lighter, if you will. And then with being pulled by tension T1, like that. Okay? Uh, that's all that's given to us. All right? Uh, so I'm going to uh, break the system apart. So basically what, I'm, what I mean by that, I'm going to draw block B right here and block A here separately. And then I'm going to put all the forces on him and then find, you know, there is a tension and tension two here and tension one here. Let me put a two and a one here. Okay. So what are the forces on the block B? Again, probably the masses or the MG is not important here because everything is moving along the X axis uh, and there is no friction. So the normal force is not important. Okay. So if I take block B, the only force in the horizontal direction is really T2. Again, out of the body. See that? Out of the body. Tension is always out of the body. Keep that in mind. Uh, I would have put a friction here like this. You know what I mean? Because as, as it moves to the right, there is a friction force. But he said it's frictionless, so we're not going to do that. Now, block A, however, it has T1 going this way, and we have T2. Which direction is it? Out of the body. See that? T2. Look, compare those two tensions. They're the same, but because it's out of the body. So it's out of the body of B and out of the body of A. You got that? Okay. And so both of them are moving in this direction. So if I apply some of the forces uh, on B equals M sub B A, some of the forces on A is equals L, uh, M sub A, A. I hope you agree with me that the acceleration of both going to be the same, right? Because it's a one system. I mean, they're both connected, so they would have the same velocity and the same acceleration, okay? Uh, it doesn't make sense that one of them would have a different speed than the other. Otherwise, if this would be the case, then the... Um, the the cord between them would slack like that if you will you know what i mean or you know it's rigid we're assuming it's rigid so it's not elastic so anyway the acceleration would be the same for both okay so what's going on in b here well i only got t2 so i have here t2 equals m b a and that's about it so i'm going to box this equation and i will come back to it in a sec now i'm going to do the same thing for uh a here so I have two tensions, T1 minus T2 equals MAA, is that right? And now I need to compare. He says, let's go back to the problem. He says, is the tension 2, well, greater, smaller, or equal to tension 1? Basically, yeah, how are they related to each other? All right. So how do we do that? I already know what tension 2 is. It's equal MBA. I can put that thing right here. So I have here T1 is minus M sub BA equals M sub AA. So that means T1 is equal to M sub A plus M sub B quantity A, right? So here we go. I have an expression for T sub A. And I have an expression for T sub B right there. Okay? Now look at both of them. Which one is greater? Obviously, remember, it is MB greatest than MA. <coughs> and uh, so, as you can see here, the acceleration is the same. So, obviously, T1 is greater than T2. In other words, going back to this picture... T1 is greater than T2 here. You know what I mean? Okay. And there we go. That's the end of it. That's basically the answer. Okay, good. Let's go to the problems. I want to do problem number 
17. I have like three, four, five problems to work on. So let's do number 17. Seventeen. There we go. Okay, so I have this uh, kind of cool picture. So you got this guy, sixty kilogram, must be a boy. That's pretty light for for an adult. Uh, so uh, he is climbing the rope like that, and oh, I can make it bigger. Okay, uh, let's read the problem. Number seven. What's the tension in the rope? Oh, that's it. Okay, so that's basically one statement, uh, one sentence problem. So given that, uh, you have this person climbing the rope, the cable. So what is the tension in the rope? And given that the mass of the boy is uh, 60 kilogram, and then this mass is 100. Obviously, he's not going to lift the 100 because he's too light. But there is tension in the rope, right? So he's asking, what is the tension in the rope? All right. I'll put it on the side. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to draw the free body diagram. Well, oh, sorry, let me draw the pulley. Now I'm not going to draw a human climbing. I'm just going to turn everything into a block. So basically what I have, here is the floor. Here is one side of the rope right here. And then you have a block on the floor like that. Okay. I'm going to call it block two. And then I have here the boy. I'm just going to replace it with a block. I'm going to call it block one. So I have M2 equals 100 kilogram. See the picture right here. And M1 is equal to 60 kilogram. Okay? And I want to know the tension. Okay. How do we do this problem? Again, always take the system apart. If you have a, you know, an assembly of masses like that, just take them apart and put in all the forces on each of them and then try to combine them together just like we did here. Here. We have this one system, but you have an assembly of two blocks. You take them apart, and then you look at, you know, combine the two equations together. That's what I'm going to do. So here I have two masses. Here's mass 1. Here's mass 2. And the whole system is not moving. So sigma F equals 0, not MA. Remember, MA, MA only if there is accelerated motion. There is motion. There is no motion here. So anyway, so I have here the tension in the block, excuse me, the, the, the pulley system, tension T, here is the weight M1G, that's for the boy, right? And then I have the tension for the big mass here. Um, same tension, of course, right? Why is it the same tension? Because we have the same cable. We talked about it last time. If I have one cable, one pulley, the tension here and the tension here should be the same, okay? And we have M2G, okay? Um, oh, one more thing. Because the, the mass is sitting or resting on the surface or on the floor, so what do we have in this case? We would have a normal force. Remember, whenever you have a, uh, a mass or a weight pushing on a surface, there will be a normal force. So here we have a normal force right here. I just thought about it when I put the, the diagram. So there we go. Okay. Now, I have two equations. I'm going to get an equation of motion from one, an equation of motion from two, and then somehow combine them uh, to find the tension. Okay. So from one here, I have uh, T minus um, M1G equals zero. So that T equals to m1g m1 is 60 times 9.8 is that right and that will give me um about 600 588 something like that 60 times 9.8 answer 588 <clears throat> 
Newton. There we go. I got the tension. Okay. Um, what is the normal force? Is that, I mean, if this is probably, let's just ask what is the normal force? He didn't ask for it, did he? I mean, that's, is that, is it the problem? Is that easy? What's the, yeah, he didn't ask for the normal force. Well, let's ask for it. What is the normal force? Well, again, we go to block two and write the equation of motion. So that's going to be N plus T minus M two G equals zero. And that allow me to solve, allows me to solve for N. So that's going to be uh, M two G minus T. I already have both of them. M two G is 100 times 9.8 minus 588. And then when I calculate all of that, I have uh, 392 Newton. And there we go. I have the value of the normal force. Okay. Okay, good. Um, number 24. Again, these are all pulleys and core uh, and ropes and stuff like that. Number 24. This one is a little tougher. It involves friction. There it is right here. 24. Look at the picture. So you have two masses on top of each other, and there is friction between their surfaces right here. Uh, this mass is on top of it, but it's also attached to the wall, so it's not moving. All right. Uh, mass, the lower one, however, is sliding from underneath it, and there is a tension of equal uh, tension of uh, e, uh, uh, of 20 newton being pulled. Okay, that's basically what's going on here. I'm not sure what the question is. Let's read the problem. I'll put it on the side. Oh, I'll read the problem. 24. There it is. He says a one kilogram block, which is the one, the small one here, in the figure is tied to the wall with a rope. It sits on the top of a two kilogram block. The lower block is pulled to the right with a tension of 20. The coefficient of friction between the uh, uh, between the you know the lower and the, and the upper friction uh, uh, is 0.4 okay it's not very high it's 0.4 a and b what is the tension in the rope attached to the wall the tension right here and what is the acceleration of block two okay so basically what he's asking he wants to know what is the tension in this rope we know that the tension here at 20 but he wants the tension here and he also wants how uh, what's the acceleration of block two as it slides and from underneath um, uh, mass uh, this mass? You got it? Okay, let's see how we do this. Again, you want to draw the free body diagram. So what I have in here is the wall floor here is the block two it's being pulled with 20 newton okay this is block number two and then i have block number one right here and it is attached to a rope like that And this is the tension here. Let me call it tension one. And it's out of the body. So I'm going to give it, I know the direction of it. It's going to be like that, right? Um, and then I want to know the acceleration of block two. Okay. Given that M1 is equal to one kilogram, M2 is equal to two kilogram. Okay. Okay. Um, and then mu value, the friction between the two surfaces is 0.4. Okay, so he wants, what is T, let me just call it T, I don't need T1, it's probably too much, too redundant. What's the tension and what is the acceleration? Okay, again, what do we do? Take the system apart. So I'm going to take the system apart. Here is block one. Here is block two. And um, from both put all the forces on him. All right, let's start with block one. What do we got? Well, 
block one is sitting on block two okay think of block two as a surface so that is a normal a normal vector okay a normal vector because of block two and that normal vector is going to be pointing up make sense so here i have a normal vector and i'm going to call it n1 because it's coming from block one ah. there we go and the tension is t1 or t sorry um and then we have the weight of block one m1g again there is a weight and it's pushing a block two what else do we have well think of it this way see block two it's moving in this direction right uh, so what would be the direction of the friction force on block one that direction is going to be this way It's not obvious probably, but that's okay. I'll come back to it in a second. Um, and those are the only four forces that there are on block one. Let's do block two. So block two, I have, uh, you have the 20 Newton here. Okay. And then I have M2G, the weight, that's easy. And then I have the normal because of the, it is, there is a surface at the bottom, the floor, right? So that will be a normal. I'm going to call it N2. And what else do I have? Well, I also the weight of block one is pushing on it, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have two weights really, m1g and m2g. I hope you believe that, okay? And then what else? Um, oh, there is one more thing I forgot to mention this. The coefficient of kinetic friction at both the lower and the upper surfaces is 0.4. What that means is the friction is being affected is, is affecting the surfaces on both here and here so there are really two frictions one friction force now since the block is moving this way so they have a friction force f1 going this way now you understand why i put f1 this way this direction because it's a reaction to it okay they're both so I know F1 for sure for block two is going this way because that's opposite in the motion. So now if you're confused about what is the direction of F1 on the block one, well, it's got to be opposite of that. So that's going to be that. Okay. And then also we have the friction force here and that'll be equal to, I'm going to call it F or how about if I just call it F. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't know if they are the same. They shouldn't not be the same. Remember the friction force F is equal to what? Mu N. And each of them here, F1 and F, have different N. Okay, you'll see in a minute. But you can pause the video and think about all these vectors that I have put in on those two blocks. Make sure that you understand all of that. Make sure that you believe in all of them. Okay? All right. Um, now let's talk about block number one. Uh, again, some of the force in the x direction, that's going to give me F1 minus T equals zero. Remember, I don't know T, okay? And in the y direction, I have here N1 minus M1G equals zero. Is that okay? But, I can go with, the, but F1 is equal to what? Mu N1. Yes? And N1, well, this one will give me N1. So N1 is equal to M1G. Let me box it. Okay. And I know F1 is equal to mu N1. That's the standard formula for it. I can take that. and I, I can take this, what I mean, and put it, put it in here. So that's going to be equal to <clears throat> mu M1G. There we go. I have an expression for F1. Okay. Now, I can take this and put it right here, this equation right there, to find the tension. So, I have here, uh, with this equation, so that's a T equals F1, is that right? So, that's the tension T is equal to, well, what's F1? F1 is right here. So, that's equal to mu M1G, okay? And I think I got everything. The mu is 0.4. M1 is 1, and G is 9.8.
So therefore, the tension is 3.9 Newton. There we go. I have the tension. So I got all of that from block number one. Okay. All right. Um, do you agree with me that F1, those F1 and F1 here are the same, right? Okay. So in other words, if I know F1 here, it's the same as this F1. Because it's the same surface. They're rubbing against each other. So they should be, logically, they should be the same, right? The same force. All right. Um, so let me go to block number two and put in all the equations of motion for it. So block number two. So the y in the uh, in the um, in the y direction. So that's going to be n two in the y direction. Uh, sorry, let me put the x direction first. So I have here minus f one <coughs> minus f plus twenty equals to m. 2a. Is that okay? You remember block one is not moving, right? Remember the picture? Block one is not moving. So that's why we said f1 minus t equals zero. But block two is actually sliding from underneath it with an acceleration. So it is moving. So I have to put in that m2a. You got that? That's what makes it a little bit different. Okay. Okay, good. Um, I'll come back to this formula. Let me box it. I hope you understand it. Now, in the y direction, what do I have? Look at it in the y direction, which is right there. I have here n2, n sub 2, minus m1g, minus m2g, equals 0. I can easily find n2, because I got everything. So that's going to be m1, whoops, plus m2 times g and I can plug in my numbers in there and I can find uh, n2 let me find it very quickly so they're going to be 1 plus 2 times 9.8 and that will give me let me use my calculator so I have here 3 times 9.8 answer 29.4 There we go. Okay. Um, I have N2. Um, what else do I have? Well, see, I, I know what F1 is equal to, correct? F1. F1, here, look at that. This one tells me, let me put it in red so you can see it. See that? Um, T and F1 are equal. And T is equal to that. So I know what F1 is. F1 here is easy. It's basically 3.9 right there. I got it. Okay. Now, what is F? Well, F, the formula for the official formula of F. Here's the F. Remember, F is at the bottom, right? F, the official formula for any, any formula, uh, uh, the friction formula, is mu N2. Is that okay? I mean, I can call it F2 if you want to, if that bothers you. There we go. Okay. And what is N2? Well, N2 is right here. I have it. And I know mu is 0.4. So I got the F2. So F2 in this case, therefore, F2 is equal to mu times 29.4. So that's 0.4 times 29.4. <clears throat> and that will give me 11.76. Um, and there we go. I have F2. Remember, he's asking for the acceleration. I'm coming closer and closer to it. Well, actually, I'm done, really. I got, you go back to this. Let me put a different color. Uh, put it green. I got F1, which is right here. I got F2, which is right here. And 20. And then M2, I know it's equal to 2. And that's it. I got the A. I'm done with the problem. See that? So, therefore... Um, back to that, pro uh, forgot what the equation is, minus F1, 
minus F2 or F minus 20. Is that right? Did I do it right? Plus 20, sorry. Equals to M2A. Plug. So here I have minus F1, which is um, minus 3.9. Remember F1, F1 right here is equal to T. And F2, I just got it, 11.6, 7.6, plus 20 equals M2 is 2 times A, and then I would solve for A. And when you work it out, do I have it? If you work out all that, you'll end up getting, um, I hope I did it right, 2.17 meter per second squared. There we go. That's a cool problem. Okay? Good. All right, one more. Number 25. Oh, right here. So here's the picture. Again, we have a pulley system, and we have a, <clears throat> a mass M, seems like it's unknown. I have a 100 kilogram here, so you maybe you let the system go. So this 100 kilogram is gonna go and you're gonna hit the floor. Uh, it is initially one meter away abo above the floor, and then M1 will uh, M here will go up by something like that. Let's read the problem and see what's going on. He says a 100 kilogram block takes six seconds to reach the floor after being released from rest. Aha. Uh -huh. What's the mass M on the left? Okay. Assume that the pulley is massless and frictionless. Okay. All right. Kind of a neat little problem. Okay, so let's draw the diagram. Again, you always draw. Uh, you kind of you help your brain think about the problem when you draw the whole thing. Uh, you draw it correctly. I'm not doing a good job here. Okay. Uh, you know, it's better to draw the circle first, and then you put that line. There we go. And then we have here the 100 kilogram mass is right here. I'm get, again, I'm going to call it 2. I like to deal with numbers later. And then I have the M here. Here it is. I'm going to call it 1 or M. I'll call it M. I'll call it 1. Sorry about that. And then I have here the floor, and it is 1 meters above the floor, like that. And then you let go. So it's going to go. Tut, 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 tut. It's going to come down, and this thing, this thing will go up. All right. So he says it takes six seconds to reach the floor. Um, what's the mass M equal to? And if the initial velocity is zero, of course. Okay. Um, all right. Um, can we do the? Can we get something out of this problem before we do any? Um, um, what do you call it? Any, um, uh, you know, uh, free body diagram without putting the free body diagram. I mean, what do we have? We have the initial velocity is zero. The We know the distance here uh, and we know the time. So I can go to the, I know that, excuse me, and I know the height y right here. So I can go with the third kinematic equation y equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. See that? The initial velocity is zero, and the y here is one, or negative one, rather, uh, if you want to be s specific about it. Uh, and then we have the acceleration. We can solve for the acceleration, right? So let me just, uh, so we have here one meter is equal to one half a t squared 
is 6 seconds squared. So I can find the acceleration easily here before I do anything, just using kinematics. Uh, and when I do that, um, this will give me, let's see, uh, 36 divided by 2 inverse answer 0 0.06, okay? So now I have the acceleration. It's very low acceleration. Meter per second squared. It's kind of understandable. It's going to start. It's not going to go very fast. You know. All right. Um, he's asking for... I forgot what he's asking for. Sorry about that. What's the mass? Oh, yeah. What's the mass? Okay. So again, now we, we can take the system apart and you get the equation of motion. So here's block one. Here's block two. And put the motion. The motion of block two is down. The motion of block one is up. This is important because I want to put a minus and plus sign on the acceleration. Remember that? We talked about that in the previous lecture. So anyway, I have a tension T. I have a tension T as well. Both equal because they have one rope. Got that? This is M1G, or should I call it? I'll just call it M1G. And then this one is M2G. I already bo know, bo uh, I know uh, M2G, what it is. And we have the acceleration is down. I put a minus sign. The acceleration is up here. Got it? Okay. With the block one here, I have my EOM is T minus M1G equals M1A. Got it? <coughs> Excuse me. And then with my EOM for um, the block two is going to be T minus M2G equals M2A with a minus because it's coming down. You got it? Now, I'm not interested in the tension, so I can eliminate it. And I'm pretty much done with the problem. I know everything. I know the A. I know the M2. Uh, the only unknown here, really, once I eliminate T, is just a, a M1. And that's it. You're done with the problem. So let's work out the algebra. So um, let's see. Uh, I can solve for T here. Here. So I have here T is equal to M1A plus M1G. Take that T and put it right there. So that's going to be equal to um, M1A plus M1G minus M2G equals minus, sorry, minus M2A. Okay. And I'm solving for M1. So I can take uh, M1 and M1 as a common factor from those two guys. And I can move this over here. I can do that in one shot. So it's going to go like something like this. M1 uh, A plus G equals to M2 um, G minus A. I hope I did it right. And there we go. So I have here. So therefore, M1 is equal to G minus A over G plus A times M2. There we go. Okay, uh, I hope I did it correctly. It looks like I have. I feel like it's, um, it looks good. So I have here 9.8 minus A. I already got the A right there, guys. This is a very tiny acceleration. So I have here uh, negative 0 0.06 over 9.8 plus 0 0.06 times the mass of the, the big mass is equal to uh, 100 kilogram. And when I work it out, I end up with 99 kilogram, the mass M. And there we go. Okay? Great. Um, I have, I mean... I could go on and do a 20 of them. Uh, I think I'm going to do two more, and that's it. We'll, uh, we'll finish this lecture. Um, let me do number 45. There we go. This one is kind of a little bit confusing and uh, kind of a brain teaser a little bit can be tough to some people so what you have here is you have this uh, worker uh, he's sitting on the thing 
and he's lifting himself up with a pulley like that, okay? So here we have a house painter uses a chair and a pulley arrangement. Uh, I mean, don't try this at home. This is pretty dangerous, you know? Anyway, <laughs> a house painter uses a uh, the chair and pulley arrangement to lift himself up the side of a house. The painter's mass is 70 kilogram and the chair's mass is 10 kilogram. With what force must he pull down on the rope in order to accelerate upward with 0.2 meter per second squared? All right, so that's what we got. All right, um, we have here number 45. Um, I'm going to draw the picture. So you start with the pulley. If I was using a pencil, I would draw it really nice. Okay, and then uh, you have here is the um, here's one side of it. Um, here is the seat right here. I'm not going to be uh, give you an elaborate drawing or anything like that. So here is the guy right here. These are his hands, and these are. There we go. Let's give him a personality. And he is holding this side. Extend his arm to pull himself up. Okay like that and of course he's pulling himself up with acceleration a okay so the mass of the worker is 70 kilogram um, the mass of the seat the chair I'm gonna call a C sub H C M C H is 10 kilogram I'm gonna add them together really right and he said what force is needed to accelerate uh, the rate with 0.2 meter per second squared. Okay, that's basically what it is. All right, so how do we do this problem? Again, uh, first thing that comes to my mind, I need to draw the free body diagram. So I'm gonna convert the worker and the seat into one block, just like that. Here is the block. And how many tensions do we have on this block? Well, look at that. See, this is the block right here. Think of it. Uh, let me put a different color. The reason it's confusing is people don't see, t they, they don't see two tensions. Here's the block right here. Here's the block. Make sense? So, because you can see, you can see tension here and tension here. So, actually, there are really two tensions. And both are equal because why they are both equal? Well, they both have the same rope. Look at that. Same rope. That's the confusing part. If you get, if you if you know that, if you see that, you're done with the problem. Really, that's it. The problem is over. But you have to see that you are doing two ropes here, and that's mg of the guy. The m here, of course, is the combined mass of the seat and the and the worker. And that's it. That's really the end of it. It's a pretty pretty simple problem. I wanted to show it to you because, uh, from my experience solving this problem over the years, people get really confused on it. So anyway, so we have here. Uh, looking at this diagram right there, so I have here <clears throat> 2t minus mg equals ma. Of course, the m again is the combined mass, this one, both of them. All right, and then he said, What is the tension? So, tension here is going to be ma plus mg over 2, and we can just uh, take m as a common factor, a plus g over 2 and this will give us again uh, the the mass is sorry what the masses are uh, the mass is 70 plus 10 so that's going to be uh, 70 plus 10 this is for the mass m so that's going to be 80 times the acceleration is 0.2 plus 9.8 divided by 2 and that's it so therefore the tension is going to be equal to 400 newton
okay great um, the next one number 38 a uh, little bit more involved Okay, let me show you number 38. There it is. Uh, there it is. Uh, so here you have a double pulley system, but one cable, and we have three masses. This is a complicated system, okay? Before I do this problem, I would like to do it for you. Before I do it, I want to do something simpler, and then I will come back to this one, okay? So let me just take this one away, and I will do something simpler so let me just uh so here's an example for you rather than having three masses imagine you have the same table something like that and sorry and then i have a pulley right here just one pulley rather than two in the previous problem right there and then we have a mass I'm gonna call it m1 right here okay and then I have a a, uh, a, a rope that runs over the pulley like that and then from the other side I have mass 2 like this okay suppose that the mass one equals four kilograms mass two is equals to seven kilograms okay so obviously what's going to happen is that uh, again you want to look at the diagram and run the film of your head in other words ask how the system is moving so the way it's moving is moving this way m1 is moving to the right and m2 is moving down right remember down is negative acceleration um uh, so um, the question is, given that the coefficient of friction between block one and the surface of the table here is um, 0.5, okay, this is given, uh, find the friction force and the acceleration of the system, okay? So let's see how we do this problem. Um, this, if you don't understand, if you understand this problem, number 38 should be easy. So how do we do it? Well, like the usual, I'm going to break the system apart. So um, I'm going to take block one. Here it is. And ask the question, what are the forces on it? I'm going to have a tension, T. Again, I only have one tension because I only have one rope, one pulley, right? I have M1G, I have the normal, okay, and I have the friction. Remember, the, the system is moving this way. Remember, it's very important that you know the motion of the system, how it's moving, going this way, right? There we go. Um, there we go, okay. Um, I'll come back to it. Let me draw block number two. It's simpler. It is. It has a tension T, again, out of the body. The station T and this one is the same. And then I have M2G. And since the system is moving down, it's going to be negative. Keep that in mind. All right. So uh, let's go back to block one and put in. Uh, I have here two EOMs, one along the X and one along the Y. The system is accelerating, so um, some of the forces, sorry, some of the forces in the x direction equals to T minus F, is that okay? Equals M1A. Some of the forces in the y direction is just N minus M1G equals zero, okay? So from the Y component, N is equal to M1G. I'm gonna box it, I'm gonna come back to it later, okay? And I have this one. Let me box it for now, I'll come back to it. Now let's go with block two here. So again, the block 
2 is moving downward like that. So that's going to be T minus M2G equals minus M2A. Why minus? Because it's going down. Got it? Um, I'm not interested in the tension, neither this T or this T. So I can eliminate it, okay? Um, how do I do that? Well, uh, remember, I'm, I'm, I'm being asked to find the, oops, the accelerate, uh, sorry, the, uh, the friction and the acceleration. So let me, let me work on this one here. Um, let me call this equation one, and this is equation two. Okay, from equation one, like I said, I'm in, not interested in the tension, so I'm going to eliminate this. So 10, uh, T is equal to M1A plus F. Is that okay? Um, I know that M1A plus mu N. Is that okay? Remember, F is mu N. Well, N is M1G, so I can take it in there. So I have here M1A plus uh, mu M1G. I have a neat little expression for the tension. I can put it right in there, all right? Method of elimination, if you remember. So now, equation two, um, I have T, which is that, this T, which is all of that. That's gonna be M1. A plus mu M1 G minus M2 G equals minus M2 A. There we go. Again, I'm interested in finding the A. So I'm going to take this one right here, move it to the other side because I'm solving for A and leave all of that in there. So I have here mu M1 G minus M2 G equals to uh, minus um how do i do this m1 plus m2 a like that and therefore when i work it out hopefully i'm i don't have a solution in front of me so i'm working on the fly here i hopefully i'm not making any dumb mistakes uh you know let me uh um let me take hold on so i have here mu m1 minus m2 quantity g over minus m1 plus m2 or i can go m2 minus m mu m1 over m1 plus m2 g equals a there we go i have a neat little expression now you plug in your numbers right we have everything so when you plug them in you're going to get the a equals to 4.45 meter per second squared. I only have the answer. I don't have the solution. There we go. Okay. And then uh, you go back to this formula. Um, let me put it in red. The expression for, whoops, the expression, this one right here. So F equals mu N or mu M1G. And then I can find the friction force. I have everything, right? The mu is given to me. The mu is right here. And you just plug it in. Okay? I hope this is clear. Okay. If you understand this one, hopefully you're not going to have a problem understanding number 38, which is the last problem I'm going to work for this uh, lecture. So let's work on it. <clears throat> Back to the book. Here is the picture. Okay. Uh, maybe pause the video and draw it and think about it yourself. Remember, this is three kilogram heavy. Uh, so probably going to move this way, this down, this one up, this one to the right, something like that. Right. Uh, let's read the problem. The coefficient of kinetic friction on the two kilogram block, the one on the table right here, is 0.3. What's the acceleration of the two kilogram block? Well, he basically wants to accelerate the whole system because you're dealing with 
uh, I mean, even though it's two ropes and two pulleys, but the whole system is intact, so everything is, you know, tight, if you will. So basically, um, the acceleration should be the same. Does this make sense? Okay, let's see how we work it out. It's a, it's a, it's a messy problem. There's a lot of, uh, we, uh, there are three, three masses. You have to take them apart and then put the, uh, get the equation of motion of each of them. You'll end up with uh, four different equations of motion. Two from this one, and one from this one, and one from this one. And then you're going to start working on the algebra to combine them. So let's let's see how we do it. <clears throat> put it on the side like that. Again, I'm going to draw it. So here is the table. Here's the block, block two. I'm going to call them, again, I like to give them names, all right? Uh, and this is the pulley right here. And there's another pulley right here. And then you got the cord or a cable right there. It's not, sorry, it's not uh, pretty. And then we have, we have a block number three. And that's block number one. Okay. Okay, um, there we go. Now, the the second question, once you draw it, always ask the question, and I told you this uh, several times, run a film in your head and see this how the system is moving, which direction it's moving. Well, it's moving this way. Because if you don't know, you'll have a problem with finding where the direction of the friction force and all that. So it's kind of moving this way, right? It's going down and moving up. This is how it's going. All right? Okay. Um, now, I'm going to take the system apart. I'm going to put block number one here. Block number two. And block number three. And then I'm going to put all the forces on each of them. And then to remind myself, acceleration is going this way here. So I have here T1. Right? Remember, the tension is of this one right here, T1. And then the, uh, oh, I forgot to mention something. Because we have two ropes, I am not sure if the tension is the same. I'm really not sure, okay? Most likely, it's probably not the same, okay? Because I have two cables. If it was one cable, sure. Now, I think, I'm almost sure, that the acceleration is the same because the system is tight. There's nothing slacking here. So the acceleration here, this arrow going this way or this way or this way, the acceleration is the same. The speed is the same. But are the tension the same? Um, not, I don't think so, because we have two different cables, okay? So this is important. I forgot to mention that. So there we go. So we have here, I'm going to call this T1. Of course, this T1 here, and there's a T1 here. Because this is the same cable. Then is it a T2 coming out and then T2 coming out from 3. Okay. Anyway, so we have that. And then this one is M1G. And that's it. Now for, uh, let's go to block 3. Block 3, I have T2 and M3G. And it's going down. Okay. That's it. Now, block 2 is the most complicated one. Let's start with the vertical. So I got the normal because it's sitting on a surface, and then this one is M2G, and he says there is friction. He said there is a 0.3, so there is friction force. Now, because we know the system is going in this direction, the friction is going to be in the opposite, so that's going to be the friction force right there, and let me just uh, move it apart right there, and we have what? We have T2, uh, excuse me, T1, right? T1 like this one. Because we have the same cable. Um, what else? Well, we have also T2 here. And there we go. Okay? Now, like I said, we have two equations of motion from here. Two EOMs. One EOM and one EOM here. So we have a total of four. Uh, uh, four? Yeah, four. Let's get them all. Whoops. So from the first block, what do I got here? T1 minus M1G equals M1A. Box it. I'll come back to it. 
um, T3, or block 3, excuse me, that's going to be T2 minus M3G equals minus M3A, like that, and box it. Now, the middle block, the most complicated one, let's work on the x-axis. The x-axis, some of the forces of the x-axis equals ma, m2a rather. So I have here <clears throat> uh, minus t1 plus t2 minus f equals m2a. Okay. And then some of the forces in the y-axis equals zero. And that's going to be equal to what? N equals M2G. So I get those. Once you get that, you're done with the problem, really. The rest is just math. We're done with the physics, if you know what I mean. That's the end of physics or engineering, whatever you want to call it. I've seen this kind of problem in uh, engineering dynamics and, uh, you know, uh, in, a, in your next course, in advanced dynamics course in engineering. I've seen this problem several times. So anyway, there we go. And the, the only thing left is what you do is the following. Now, let me remind you what he's asking for. What's the acceleration? That's it. You just want A. Okay? So T is here. T1 and T2 is not important. So what I'm going to do, the way I'm going to attack this problem, is I use method of elimination. I don't like T1 and T2 from my middle equation. My middle, the, the master equation that I have is this one right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug everything in it. I'm going to plug this for the T2 in it, the plug the T1 in it, and then the F, which is mu N, I'm going to plug the N right here in it. And then I'm going to have a big uh, equation from that, and then I'm done with the problem. Okay, that's the plan of attack. I mean, again, this is just the math. This is the math part. So what I'm going to do now, from this equation right here, uh, solve for T2. So that will be equal to minus M3A plus M3G. Okay? Here's T2. And from this equation, solve for T1. M1A plus M1G. There we go. Now take those two and put them in the in the master equation. I'm going to call it master equation. Okay? But before I do that, what is F? Well, F, put it in different color. Well, just put it here. Uh, F is equal to mu M, uh, I'm sorry, mu, uh, uh, mu N, excuse me, mu N, right? So that will be equal to mu M to G. That is the F. So I'm going to take this one, this one, and this one, put them all into here. All right? So I'm going to take this, put it right here, this one, put it right there, and then this one, uh, this one right here, put it right there, okay? So let's do it. You're going to end up with a big monster of an equation. Here it is. Let's use uh, purple. So I have here, I'm just going to minus M1A, minus m M1G plus here, M1 plus M2G. What am I doing? Oh, that's a minus right here. Be careful, guys. So I'm going to have a minus here. Minus M1G plus, um, and then I'm going to, what I'm going to do is, uh, l let me solve for F here. F is equal, this is minus F right here. So it's going to be this one. Minus mu M2G. Then let me solve for T2, which is right there. So that's going to be my, minus M3A plus M3G equals M2A. And that's it. So what I'm going to do now, I want to collect this one, this one, and this one. They all contain A. Put them on the other side. Work out the algebra. I'm just going to show you the, the final step. I already solved this problem. And you can work on it. So you'll end up with this. Again, don't trust my solution completely. Maybe I, I, may, I might have made a mistake. So M3 minus M1 minus mu M2 quantity G over M1 plus M2 plus M3 like that. And then you plug in the numbers. So let's plug them in. So you have 3 
minus 1 minus 0.3 times 2 times 9.8. <clears throat> All of that divided by 1 plus 2 plus 3. And then we solve for A, so therefore A equals to 2.3 meters per second squared. And there we go. You got it? That's it. I think uh, that should be good enough. Uh, we are closing at uh, two hours of this lecture. That's good. And okay, I will, uh, I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.